Hi, Tedsters. This is my first time at TED Active. And welcome to my backyard. <laughs> That's how we call Whistler here. Um, yes, my name is Vlad Savchenko. I'm uh, one of the local entrepreneurs here. And so one thing I was wondering, like, if this TED is active, does it make really TED in Vancouver passive? <laughs> well, welcome to the active uh, outdoor place of Canada. Cycling is my passion, and uh, this is uh, what I'm going to tell you a little bit. Uh, how many people actually ride bikes or actually have bikes here? Oh, perfect, perfect. Well, um, you probably, if you're using bikes, you probably use some bike computers. And uh, many traditional bike computers, uh, like this one, use, uh, use a magnet on a spoke to measure your distance. If you're an avid cyclist, you probably experience the problem like what I experience quite often. You go for a ride, you load your bike in the car, unload it, mount the wheels, then you go for a ride and suddenly you notice that your wheel sensor skips few revolutions. It usually happens because magnets get shifted while you're unloading it. So now you need to stop, adjust the magnet, uh, make sure that everything works, and go for a ride. Probably you have to catch up with your friends or probably lose some of your precious data. Well, traditional sensors use magnets, and this is a hassle. They are also not very accurate. The accuracy of this sensor is your full wheel revolution, which is about seven feet of distance, over two meters. When we started dealing with this problem, we wanted to create a sensor which will be more accurate, but also less complex. Over the last seven years, we've been working with this problem, with my team, and we came up at first with a very nice solution. The sensor, which was very accurate, it's about 360 times more accurate than any sensors ever created. But it hasn't been smooth sailing the entire way. We actually made a typical engineering mistake. We over-engineered the solution. Um, and then we fell into a common trap, what engineers experience. You see, somebody has created the sensor originally with the magnet, and we saw that status quo. We created our sensor, which was more accurate, but still used the same magnet on a spark. And it took us a while to figure out uh, what was the bug in our solution. We were trying to offset some naturally occurring matter, like magnetism. We thought there is a bug in our sensor solution. We created very complex algorithms to offset it, but still couldn't resolve it. At last, we took a giant step back and looked at the problem from a wider angle. And then, Eureka! What was the problem became a solution. What was the bug became a feature. Now you can see how accurate the sensor is. As soon as I touch the wheel, you can see the distance is moving. Out. It actually works backwards, too. <laughs> now, the, this kind of sensors can be used by professional riders, but also, as you notice, there are no magnets whatsoever on this wheel, which makes it really easy for you. You just snap the wheel and go. No hassle whatsoever. Now, this sensor works with uh, uh, Bluetooth devices, but we also have an ant device which can work with the Garmin computers and many other devices. What we learned from our experience is that if you have a problem, the nature always offers you a solution. All you need to do is step back, look at the problem, and you prob probably find the solution in nature itself. Thank you for your attention. If you want to talk to me and learn how that technology works, please, I'll be around with the guy with the bike here. Thank you.